and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host, Heather Baker. We are here with Martin Devaney. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm always excited to talk to somebody else from St. Paul. Yeah. Always, yes, which is always a thrill. Uh, and I love the new album so much. I, um, I thanks. We're going to get a chance to talk about folios and, and dispatch and what I like about it is it sounded so familiar the first time I listened to it in the best way. Cool. Thanks. That's, you know? I always like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you, you try something on, you're like, this is like, I've, this is like, I've owned it my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. There were, yeah. I love that feeling. I definitely have records like that for sure. So that's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, well, and then now we'll kind of backtrack into it. Cause you, have, you have many albums out. You've played lots of different permutations high respects i didn't realize you had played with yeah that's the original a, the yeah, original version out of high school that's fantastic but yeah. this folios is is an, an entirely new kind of a project yeah that's yep kind of just came to be about this starting around this time last year yeah and yeah just something something different well, and at this time last year, we were all really stuck in the middle of a, of a pandemic and how yeah. much of a player is, was that, is that in folios? A fair amount. I think I was, I was writing a lot. Um, I had a really good stretch of writing and, um, you know, I think they were ostensibly demos for whatever my next record was going to be. And as I kept working on them a little more and feeling like, you know, I don't know what I'm going to be able to get in the studio with with any other musicians. Um, I started to kind of be a little more patient about my demoing, <laughs> and uh, I'm not very, you know, well versed in that. Um, but <laughs> being patient or making demos, but uh, I did, and I kept adding stuff and kind of playing it for some friends. And I decided to just kind of embrace that and think, uh, start to consider releasing something from it, and. You know, some people encouraged me to do so. So I kind of worked on it, you know, after a while in the mindset of it being a record. And yeah, it was kind of born out of necessity and then actually kind of became what I wanted to do with it. Um, Cause I do like a lot of lo-fi rock and roll stuff. And, and um, yeah, just, it kind of was out of necessity at the beginning and I kind of embraced it, I guess, I don't know. I thought it was uh, funny you were, had said I've been trying to break up with myself so you could create this. And as you were alluding that it kind of became the new direction, Was did that help the whole record? Just like I think it said it just kind of poured out of you once you gave yourself yeah. that freedom of... Um, a little bit more. I mean, I, I had been kind of productive, but then the concept of like doing that definitely, you know, I was kind of excited about the idea of trying something new and um, not that the music's wildly different than anything I've done, but just, and the fact that like, you know, it's a lot more personal, um, digging deep kind of, you know, tunes that uh, would make more sense to put out under my name, but there is a little bit of a distance in there in doing it under a moniker, you know, band name. And I think uh, then I kind of, it brought me outside of myself in terms of writing because I kind of looked at it all differently, I guess. And um, yeah. I was gonna say too, it's, it is like a uh, pandemic infused just because it it's so stripped down because we're all just in our houses by ourselves. Yeah, but you got the coolest, best version. You know, it's not, let's say, more lyrically, but just the stripped down, bare bones type of thing, which I thought was yeah. really cool. And a little bit of that too is that I don't, you know, know how to play every instrument or how to program drums or anything. You know, it was really uh, <clears throat> not, yeah, just kind of did what I kind of wanted to do what I was able to do. So that was whatever instruments I had on hand and could reasonably play and uh, whatever sounds I could get. And um, yeah, I just kind of went with it, you know. I was saying to Heather before, well, well, we were talking about the music before, it really brings me back to some of the 
the late eighties, early nineties, I think in like a Billy Childish, which I a big fan of back in the day. And I think okay, yeah. that just that stripped down version of stuff and kind of the honesty of the sound. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a big fan of like, you know, that kind of, yeah, eighties and nineties indie rock, you know, kind of that lo-fi aesthetic and just, you know, um, getting a take with feel more than anything. There's definitely things on that I could have cleaned up, but I felt like they couldn't really, it wouldn't be right if it didn't sound that way. And certainly like, as I started playing with the band, there was that thought too of like, oh man, maybe I should have waited and done this right in the studio. But like the little idiosyncrasies that came with doing it this way, I think became part of the song. And I kind of, there's definitely that community um, you know, I don't know that I would do it that way every time, but I think it worked for this. So. There's something about the the keyboards on weekend holidays that I just think is <laughs> it, it you know it part it tears at the heart string. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, yeah. You know, there's yeah, so, there, it's very evocative. Theory. Sure. Yeah, that was funny because I kind of been working on that tune and just walking around with it and that hook kind of popped into my head I'm like that has to I have to be stealing that from something which I'm sure I am but <laughs> it's it's, and that. I can't figure out what it is and it's not ska, yeah. but it's again it's that early 90s late 80s I'm trying to think back to because sure. of course I listen to music because I'm that old but you know I'm, there's something yeah. but it's just it's great yeah thanks yeah I had to put something you know a little brighter and catchier there in the middle of all the gloom um, so <laughs> Just trying to do something a little, you know, a little bit lighter. But yeah. But there's, I, I like, and I'm listening to it. You know, been listening to it, and we've had rainy weather for the last couple of days. And well, and sure. the, the other thing is, I spent a lot of my time in the late '80s, early '90s, in England, in Ireland. So it has that feel to me of that very okay. um, relishing in the raininess and the. I do well, and that's my favorite weather is that, you know, 65 overcast, drizzly, that's, I, Ireland weather is my weather, so, yeah. Yeah, you've kind of, well, and, and I'm trying to think of what song that you even, um, Bad Penny. And Galway Bay. Bad, well, yeah, and I'm thinking of Shane McGowan oh, and some and of the other, yeah, the, the yep. Bad Penny and. Yep. Yeah, yes. uh, definitely, uh. Definitely a presence there, yeah. Well, and, you, and th what I like about that is you nailed both the Irish illusions and the Minnesota nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I really summed it up there. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of encapsulated St. Paul all in one right there. But yeah, succinctly got it, I guess, yeah. I was going to say, I hear uh, Paul Westerberg. Okay. His solo, like, I was just yeah. like, it brought me there but i liked that you said if you had low and lemon heads have practice space together i was yeah. like ah, oh, i can hear that too it has this interchangeable sure. i don't know i will for for the record i tried to buy it three times tonight and it won't let me so you need to sure. yell at me in camp <laughs> yeah. band camp is love. not doing you any favors right now Okay, I will check that out. That's yeah. That's well, good. I'll try uh, it again. But yes, okay. it is. I, it is incredible work. I I am a fan, anyways. But I really love this album. Oh, right on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, those two bands. It's just kind of th those are my two instincts, my two speeds. It's like the the really maudlin slow stuff and the kind of breezy, strummy power pop stuff. Um, and yeah, Westerberg, of course always been a big influence and, and i really dug those records that he put out you know the ones he was making in his basement um those came out you know early in my songwriting life and so i never really tried to do anything like that till now but um yeah i love that stuff do you think because we were all you know locked in our spaces and stuff and everybody's watching shows back when they were teenagers and good times and whatever do you think maybe that's why you kind of went to westerberg or whatever like uh yeah 
discovery of your, or, you know, just like your own personal, like, woo, here's a, this is my go-to music loves, yeah, I guess. I, I think so. I mean, I'm a nostalgic person anyway, um, but certainly had a lot of time to reflect on some stuff last, you know, fall and winter. And with that, I mean, I think, you know, I wrote a lot of songs during this period of time and, and chose the ones I did for the, for the record. Um, but I wrote in some different styles as well. And what I've realized is um, that in doing it that way, in that really isolated way, um, and making the decisions without showing them to other people, really, uh, I found the tunes that felt the most natural to me, the most I was, the ones I was most inclined to write, maybe, if just like that, let every other influence kind of melt away and nothing, you know, not trying to write like who I've been listening to lately or whatever. And those were the tunes that stood out to me as the ones that felt the most me like. And I've been able to like go back and look on records that I've made and been like, yeah, you know, this one would fit, that one would fit. The, that one but you know as a whole uh this just kind of feels natural to me like i'm not attempting to write in any particular style it's just what occurred to me so what songs yeah. on this off this album do you think are the most you um i think the ones like um i think bad penny i think no line in the sand i think count the sunrise um you know weekend holiday to an extent and yeah those are the ones that maybe feel the most like encapsulate what i'm after i guess <laughs> but, i was gonna uh, say yeah the uh, uh sunrise one re reminded me it should be paired with a ethan hawk independent film oh, or something yeah. i could totally see that oh we should get it <laughs> yeah Yes, I'm like, this project. would be a good pairing. <laughs> I have to make a, hey, that's my bike joke. Uh, <laughs> bike. But, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I, what, oh, the good. no line in the sand, what I like is, well, I mean, it's the, it, it starts off, welcome to the second act. I mean, it's, sure. it's, it's the song of somebody who's not 18 years old. Oh, um, no. I don't want to say mature because that makes you sound old, but I mean, but it's not, you know, it's, it's somebody who's thought about stuff and is maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lived yeah. and pa lived past some mistakes. Yeah, for sure. Um, yep. Yeah, definitely like, uh, something, yeah, definitely like, a taking the next step kind of situation and trying not to make a big deal out of it, but just to, you know, get a fresh start. And, uh, strategically placed as the first song on side B of the actual vinyl record. So there's the inside joke uh, to good. that one. That's, I like that. I like that sort of planning. But uh -huh. I like that sort of song because I think <laughs> it's, it appeals to people of all ages because if you're 18, you can appreciate there's some, something better coming. And if you're not sure. 18, you you understand it better, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And this you know, especially if there's a confidence in that second act. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of this is, you know, was just realizing like that I, I kind of fell in love with the work, you know, the act of writing and I hadn't felt that way in a really long time. I remember being more youthful and more energetic about like the process of writing and revising. And I kind of lost that love for a while. I mean, I still wrote a fair amount and, and put records out and stuff, but um, in this last year, I've really found a way that like, it's nourishing to me to go right and to come back to things and be patient with them. Um, and that's the, maybe that's the maturity piece to it is that I have the, I have more energy than I have had in 15 years, I feel like. Um, but I've got those 15 years of mistakes to bring along to know what not to do this time. So, yeah. Well, and it's good use of a pandemic because I mean, you, you do many things around town. I mean, you've got to, I mean, I'll just ask you, tell us about some of the other stuff you do. And I'm thinking of um, 
Pig's Eye Records and some of the, I mean, you do a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so I ran a label from 2002 to 2010 called Eclectum. And I had a couple of partners in that endeavor. Um, when that came to an end, a few years later, I kind of started my own imprint called Pig's Eye Records, essentially as a vehicle for my stuff. Um, I've helped a couple other artists, John Swartzen and Cole Diamond, uh, with their releases. But it hasn't operated so much as a traditional label, um, maybe more of a promotional tool. So uh, I am booking one night a month at the White Squirrel, new venue in St. Paul, um, under the Pig's Eye Records banner every third Thursday and kind of trying to use it as a platform to, to promote music in the Twin Cities and St. Paul. And, and, um, and then, uh, you know, I've, I've done different booking jobs for clubs over the years and um, yeah, had the label, um, you know, we're trying to, I'm trying to figure out what, what else to do with, with the imprint, you know, besides my stuff. Um, so we're playing around with that, but uh, yeah, just kind of have enjoyed having a lot of different roles in the music scene over, over the years and kind of reassessing that a lot over the pandemic too. Like what, what do I, you know, age 40, you know, in this position, how do I play into things and how do I keep, keep my ear to the ground and, and um, you know, hopefully be an asset for people as well as, you know, an active artist. So. It's hard to do that and to nourish yourself to the point of you enjoy writing and the rewriting. I mean, I think it's the editing that's always, yeah. I mean, I, th I think in anything that, that tends to be less fun than the writing, you know, but to, mm -hmm. to, to give the song the time to grow to be on yeah, the I think that patience, <laughs> that patience is a valuable thing that, you know, sometimes you do get the best thought, best thought, first thought, best thought thing, but um, often not, usually not. <laughs> and so I've, I've found to, you know, start enjoying that a little bit more. You've got um, the album release at the Aster on the on the twenty third. Yeah. Now, I mean, you've alluded a little already to are we be playing with the full band. How? Yeah. Yeah, I, it, I'm looking forward to the show because by by definition, it has to sound different than it does on the record, and and I think yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's been fun. Uh, so the the lineup is it's uh, two guitars, bass, drums, and keyboards, and another vocal. Um, some guys who I've played with at different times over the years kind of coming together for this project. And I think, you know, the idea being that um, it'll kind of be whoever is available will play. But this will be, we've done a couple shows so far uh, this summer and early fall. And uh, yeah, it's been fun seeing how the tunes take on a different shape with everybody playing. And of course, you know, then I think that I need to make like a version with these guys or something. Um, I, I still, in the end, can't see this record having come out any other way. But now, because um, we have started to work on new songs beyond this, this new record, um, even newer songs that um, I'll build with these guys in mind and, and, and in the room. And so by, you know, virtue of that, whatever we do next will be different and looking forward to that. But also, you know, yeah, seeing how these tunes play out with, with four other guys up there and, um, you know, we'll just save them for the uh, double live record in a few years. Yeah. yeah. So. I think it's, I'm a big fan of uh, Picasso and there's just really Kai where they would show his pictures as he painted them. And first it looks like a woman in a yellow chair and then it, migrates to where it doesn't, you know, but so I think the comparison of what it sounds like, you know, the original and then what it becomes would be oh, yeah. super interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And I get the Picasso comparison all the time. So it's, it's, apt. <laughs> um, it's absolutely apt. No, yes, no, no. Yes. Um, no, it is fun. And that's something else too, that I, I've been able to embrace with this project and, and newfound patience is that I've really been enjoying letting it evolve and like, just see where it goes like there's not i mean the record is a blueprint but you know i'm kind of letting people react to the songs how they want and the arrangements we're coming up with like have changed from show to show a bit and it's kind of fun and um i like that element in live music that it's not going to sound the same every time so we'll play with it some for sure yeah i mean that that's what you go to live music for right <laughs> 
you know, I'd save myself putting on shoes if I wanted to hear what it looks sounded like on the right. You know, I mean, it's, right, right, you know, right. that's, yep. but I, I love the idea of the record as a blueprint. It's a very, yeah. We do the work live, uh, you know, and yeah, but yeah. But that, uh, there's a bravery in that because people can do with it what they want. And that's a, that can, part of that generosity. Yeah. I mean, there, there was a lot of me that, once this was off at the pressing plant, I got terrified for a couple months that, uh, you know, cause I, I, I'd, I'd written these tunes, you know, like, you know, definitely some bloodletting there. And I, uh, I played them for friends and that's one thing, but to think that like we were pressing up copies of this record to sell to people to take home. And, and um, that was scary for a bit, but you know, in the end, I'm glad it's been this kind of snapshot piece of work. And uh, hopefully it taps into something that other other folks feel too. I think well, I mean, as Heather said, it is it, in some ways it is symptomatic of the of the pandemic, but it but it's kind of a, like a pivot. It's not. I mean, it's, it's a snapshot, but I think it's a snapshot and a pivot towards. Yeah, what, for sure. Because Lord knows we all have to pivot after this. Yeah, that, that 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 word got used a lot in the last year, and it's true. I mean, I think. Yeah, and I think maybe that plays into what I wanted to do here is just have come out of this with just uh, something new to work on and, and, you know, have a challenge of bringing a new project into the world and telling people about it. Do you think, oh, sorry. Do you think that you were saying you were nervous and fearful of putting it out there? Do you think uh, you kind of let go of that a little bit too, just because it was so real and personal too. Like, you're just like, well, what the hell, you know, I'm not trying to be this. I'm not trying to be that. I'm just putting myself out there a little bit. Yeah. Or what I, think so. more I, mean, I think, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's what I have to offer in terms of being a writer. I mean, uh, a lot of, had a lot of conversations with, other musician friends and, and other uh, folks in the last in the last year year or two in the in the local music scene it's like you know what what do I you know a straight white middle-aged male have to offer anyone you know like it's the no one needs to hear from me you know and I think the only thing I can say to that is not only the, you know do I believe that everyone has a voice but that you know, I, I think that that vulnerability, like the ability to be vulnerable, even though it's scary, like that's not something that we're necessarily like culturally pushed to do as men. And I think that um, there's a bravery in that. Not, I'm not patting myself on the back for anything because it's probably reads like a teenager's diary to somebody else, you know, which, hey, call it what it is. But, <laughs> but I think like... Um, as scared as I might get to put some of that onto paper and onto record, it's what I have to offer, you know, and, and hopefully good songwriting, you know, um, that I hope that good art, um, what people perceive to be good art for themselves, um, involves a little bit of like comfort that other people feel that way. And, you know, we talk about some of the things that, that scare us, um, you know, I, I know I've taken that from the music that I embrace the deepest is that feeling of like, oh, someone else feels the way that I feel. And they weren't afraid to say that. And if I can offer any percentage of that to someone, then, you know, I've done my job as a songwriter. So, that's, yeah. That's the bravery. Yeah. I mean, on a level, on some level, yes. I Not to build it up as anything, but... Um, I think that, yeah, I think that's part of being a good writer is that level of laying it out there on the line. And uh, I, I, it's what I aim for. I'm not claiming to be any, you know, excellent at it or anything, but what you aim for as a writer, I think. No, I think there's, there, as I said, it's very evocative. It's, it's just very, and it's, it's, as I said, it's very stripped down. It's very, and to open the door to, to let your discomfort lend comfort to others is a that, that's great but I, and I and I do also have to appreciate 
some is very active in women's movement and some of that the the recognition of the recognition of if white male voice but that doesn't mean that you don't have as you said everybody's got a voice right no but for it, sure it's, i recognize who i am and the you know the advantages that i've had over the last 20 years it's it's a fact and i and i want to acknowledge that you know and and try to you know despite the voice my voice is what it is i can't change that but if i can use my voice to elevate everyone else in some level i want to you know yeah. well i think in the twin cities that's something that we've all learned you know i recognize my own privilege of you know where i'm and it's like and as long as we're all recognizing you know i'm mean, gonna think that's all we can yeah. do and then use it we to had a lot of time to think about that in this last year you know and with a lot of heavy stuff going on yeah. but yeah yep yeah I think that's why it's so important too to not have the BS filled songs too to give people the straight you know because yeah. there's so much of the other noise happening and I think it, we were so saturated that it's so refreshing to be like oh thank you for being real you know I think we're gravitating more to that so I really appreciate that in your album here. Well, yeah, it's just, again, you try, you know, hopefully fill that role. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it was, it's been a, it was a tough year on everyone. It's, it's been a weird year. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's trying to document that, I guess, for myself and then toss it out there for anyone else. It's good. I was going to say, I love the artwork too on the yeah. album. Yeah, Eric did a great job. Uh, Eric Castle, he, he's been in lots of bands over the years, including a side project I did called Crossing Guards. Um, and he did the record, he did the album artwork for my, my solo record, West End. And uh, yeah, with this, I just sent him the album and a couple of notes, and that's what he came up with. So he really nailed it, I think. I love to, we've had people have, or, you know, give it, other people the direction and I love their interpretation of your work too. Yeah. I think it's so cool to see what it transforms in a different art. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It it um it it really nailed it and it's not something yeah he got it and it was really you know I opened me up to other things I wasn't seeing, you know. So yeah, for sure. That's good. It's the ripple effect of art. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I will include this in the notes, but for folks who are listening, how can they find you online? Uh, so we're at foliostheband.com. And that'll have links to all the social media and band camp and stuff. Um, but on most social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, it's also folios the band. So, yeah. Good. And the, the release, the, the, the album was released October 8th, am I close? Uh, yep, came out okay. on the 8th. Good, yeah. my, my dates are not always so, um, but we, but I do know is Aster on the 23rd, we've got yep. the, the sort of the, the CD release with Bev. Yep. And yeah, it's gonna be Nikki doing a solo opening set. Um, maybe duo, but I think solo. And then, yeah, we'll be there with the full band. Awesome. Awesome, be a good night. It's a, it's, yeah, as I said, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a very comfortable album to listen to. I mean, you know, it's that comfortable. Thank it's you. a familiar, I, comfortable is the wrong word. It's a familiar. Yeah, I mean, that's hopefully, yeah, it's what I was aiming for, so. Good. Good. Martin, yeah, thanks, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much.